Who are we going to see today? Norman Cath. Norman Cath. They're a couple of expats. They're nomads. They're flying from place to place. And right now, after traveling for three years, they're gonna hang out here in Turkey, in Antalya, exploring this area. Yes. So let's go talk to them and talk to them about their cost of living and how they're budgeting this travel. Come on. If you're new to our channel, Julie and I, we're slow roving retiring and we're nomadic as well. So it's interesting for us to get a chance to speak with other nomads and find out how they're doing things and what their costs might be like. So let's go see what Norm and Kat are doing. Hi, welcome <laughs> to Turkey. Doing good. Nice to see you again, Kath. You Looking too. forward to getting your guys' story today. Let me go ahead and show everybody where you're living. So right. this is a uh, Airbnb hotel apartment area, and it's got a nice shower, good sized bathroom, and this is your living room area. Living area. And you've got a Our mini fridge area. over there. A little mini fridge. We've got a little hot burner. Okay. A little kitchen area then. We add a little table over here with all of our goodies. Ah, you got some Malibu. <laughs> Looks like some, some Baileys yes. and Kahlua. Yes. And oh, we're going to be here for a while. We actually chocolate. bought a blender and we bought we a, just got our a, coffee cream a milk milk. frother. Okay. And then we have a little space right here, just not much, but it's enough for our little kitchen area. Oh, okay. Some supplies, the essentials. Yeah. You've got some coffee. Yeah, so when you get a hotel room like this, it gives you a little bit of options to be able to add some stuff to it. So it's yeah. really nice. Yeah, we're well, going to we... have coffee here, tea here. You know, we could have a meal here if we wanted to. Okay. Nothing too elaborate that involves cooking or a stove. Unless we go upstairs to the kitchen or downstairs. Upstairs the kitchen. But, oh, so you can use the kitchen. Yeah. But we're, nice. we're, we're going to talk more about this in a little bit, but it's also dirt cheap to go out and eat. So oh, yeah. you really don't need the kitchen yeah, that often. Out, we eat out mostly, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> this is how bright it is, too. So this is the yeah. bedroom. Very simple, but like, nice, a good nice size area. Size bed today. This is what's always nice. Good place for your clothes and, and your storage. Little scarves to get some color. Okay. And you guys got oranges outside. Everywhere. Oh, we have, look here. From... The ones upstairs have an ocean view, which we'll go up in a minute. But we have a garden view here, and it's a beautiful garden out here. It's going to have gorgeous um, grapes up in there probably when it comes out, okay. which won't be too long, I don't think. And you guys have an armor right here. This place rented for how long? Well, we told them we're going to be here until the end of April. So for all intents and purposes, this is our home for the next several months. Uh, I'm Norm Bauer. I started a blog called Travel Younger, and I'm Kat Plumley. And uh, we met about four years ago, and the truth of the matter is, within a couple of weeks, he shared with me that he wanted to travel, and I said, you got the right girl. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to travel like this my whole life. I had the opportunity a few years ago and decided this was what I wanted to do, is live in different countries at different um, couple months at a time, and, and it's come to fruition. It's been a pretty amazing journey. So we basically... Within the first month of our travels, we started traveling to see if we could do it. Spent six weeks together, and within about, what, eight months, mm -hmm. we literally set out. Sold everything, absolutely everything. Our cars, our clothes, our personal belongings, and we left. We have a backpack and a bag now. After three years, we're sort of dwindled it down, and, um, and this is what we've been doing. It's and been to kind of go back in time, we traveled throughout Spain and Portugal in the summer of uh, 2017. And we were determining, one, whether we could travel together without killing each other, because when you travel in close quarters, it's always obviously very straining. And we also want to see what's it like living in Europe. I, I saw how different people overseas live. They live to live. The cost of living is lower. Borders and currency and cultural differences don't matter. In the United States, everything is homogenous, and it's pretty much all the same. So throughout uh, the summer of, of uh, 2017, we traveled through Spain and Portugal and all the while asking ourselves, can we do this? Can we go home and can we sell everything? And you know, she was the one who kind of was more in 100% before I was, and that was on the island of Menorca in Spain, if you want to talk a little bit about that. Just quickly, there's an island off of Spain called Menorca, and it's there's three islands, but this particular island is very far behind, like about 20 years, and I just felt like when I got there, it was absolutely stunning, but it was beautiful, and I just told him one evening, I said, I'm in, this is what I want to do the rest of my life, I really want to travel, and uh, 
whatever that means. And to us, I think, just sort of to step ahead just for a second, what that really turned out to mean was that you learn to give up certain things that you thought were important. You, we went through this process of letting go, letting go of ideas and belief systems that we had because you really get to a place where you realize what's important in life is, is your relationship, your friends, you're learning new things. It's, it's for us, this is what's important. So we gave up not knowing for sure if we were going to have a really good bed or a really great shower or what we were going to run into. It became an adventure. And so, you know, this is what I, I realized at this place in Menorca. It was not what I expected, but yet it was such an adventure and just so amazing. I think one of the questions that people ask themselves when they're thinking about doing something like this is where do I want to quote unquote live? And they're thinking of a, a second home or a second country to call their home. And I think we started off with that intention as well. And we first looked into becoming residents of Portugal, uh, dismissed that very quickly, and then we started working on getting residency in Spain. And we spent several months and a fair amount of dollars to do that to actually get the permits. And you have to go through FBI background checks and a lot of different things like that. And we went all the way up to the Los Angeles Embassy for Spain and come to find out that we did not get it. And initially we were dismayed and the truth was we really didn't need that residency because we weren't planning on being somewhere for a long period of time. We really only wanted to travel, as Kat said, from one place to the next over short periods of time. So we said, screw the visa. And so we left for Spain. And in the Schengen region, which is 26 countries in Europe, you can only stay for, for 90 days in the collective 26 countries. So our first country was, was Spain. We stayed in Valencia for six weeks. And then we went to a small town outside of Rome called Tivoli, uh, a medieval town that she found that she was fell in love with. And at the end of our, our 90 day period, we had to leave. And so we came to a country that neither one of us really knew much about, and that was the country of Croatia. And if you remember sailing into Croatia that beautiful May morning, it was just absolutely gorgeous. And we ended up staying there for six weeks as well. Now we appreciate how you guys are living. Julie and I, you know, we're, we're slow traveling with our dogs and we do our one month or three months or two weeks in different Airbnbs, similar to you but you're oftentimes flying to different places, you're not doing the cars, and you're not dragging the dogs along as we are. So I think you guys maybe are able to be a little bit more mobile and quick at doing some of the things you're doing. So now when you decided that you were not going to be staying in one country, that you were going to flutter around the continent of Europe, and I think you also been to South America doing this as well, what has this entailed as far as what, what, are, what are your expenses like? What do you budget yourselves towards um, a stay? How's that working out? Yeah. Here's the thing. When we first started off, and I'm just going to share this, I was getting alimony, so our budget was a little bit higher. But while we were in Mexico, I lost my alimony, and it changed our entire budget. So we try to keep our budget, even though we have savings, we try to budget just basically upon our monthly income based through our Social Security. I mean, that's what we're living on, and we want people to know you can do this. We live on much less doing this than we did in the States. So right now, we pretty much budget around twenty-two or $2,300 a month. Yeah. And we literally tell people, we spend our money on food, travel, and housing. That's it. Because when you're traveling with a backpack and a suitcase, you literally have your clothes, and you don't buy anything else. You don't need to, and your whole way of living changes. It's not about materialistic anymore, it's about what you get to enjoy, which is people and culture and new things and excitement. And so a person who used to love clothes, hello, yeah. I had closets full of clothes. You, you don't need that anymore. So we literally live on an unlimited budget. And that allows us because we can usually get a place for around $600 a month easily. Mm -hmm. And I think that's partly because we stay for a month or two at a time. And as far as what we plan, it morphs, it changes. Like we may think, we're like we thought we were gonna be going to Greece mm -hmm. from Croatia, and we ended up here. We just follow each other's leads, and he felt very much that it was better to go someplace warmer, and he found this wonderful place here. Well, we were driven by temperatures. You know, we yeah. wanted to find warmer temperatures, and we wanted to keep going south without being able to go into, into Africa or into Israel or Jordan or anything else like that, so we ended up being here in Antalya. And we knew that it was affordable, but I don't think we quite knew it was as affordable as it was. You know, you can get a room for $15 a night, $20 a night, depending upon what location you want and how large it is. 
So when I compare that to what I was living in in Orange County, California, you know, we spend a fraction of what we would spend if we still lived in California or almost anywhere in the United oh, yeah. States. And I think the thing that's really important for people who are thinking about doing this, and we've learned so much over the three year period that we've been doing this, is people are sometimes afraid to ask people for a discount. Um, like you said, with you, you've got the dogs in the car, you've got different, we don't have that, it's just us. So we can go in and say, listen, we'd like to spend two months here, what's the best price you can give us? And almost always, we have got half off, yeah. literally half off. And that's why I think we get such great prices. Like we're staying here for four months and we got a really good price based upon that. Um, but we know other people who've never even asked, they just automatically pay the full price and don't even ask. And so we want to encourage people not to be afraid to ask mm -hmm. and, and put yourself out there and take a risk because that's how you get your amazing deals. We found so many amazing people that really want to help in any way they can. Yeah. I think that one of the things that we want to address is the shift that has to take place mentally and emotionally, and that is uh, to become a minimalist. Because when you realize how little you really need to live comfortably, you know, in America, in the United States, in most, most first world countries, you have so much stuff. You can't go into Costco or Walmart or, or Target without finding something that you didn't even think you needed and now you have to have it. And so as we left the United States, as Kat said, we got rid of almost everything and we still came over with two large suitcases. And before we left our first 45 day stay in Valencia, we got rid of one of the suitcases and a good part of the, of the clothing that we had. I think the biggest thing that, that, that people should be aware of is that it's so reasonable to buy clothing in other countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't go to the Nordic regions up in Scandinavia where you have to buy heavy boots and heavy jackets, it makes it so much easier to one, buy the clothes because it's less expensive and two, carry the clothes because it's a lot less to carry. But if you stay in what we call the Mediterranean belt, which is what we like especially, uh, you know, here we are in January of, of 2022 and we were just talking about this a couple days ago. As we get ready to leave here, in May to go other parts of Turkey, I'm going to get rid of pretty much all of my quote unquote cold weather stuff and I'm going to give it away to someone who needs them and then when we come back, when next winter comes, we'll just get new cold weather stuff because it costs a couple hundred dollars to outfit yourself so you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, this, this, yeah. This, this may sound a little bit crazy to some of you, just like clothes are disposable. Um, they are. If you looked at our recent video about some of the shopping here in Antalya your your clothes are so inexpensive that it does make sense that you can replace your jacket replace your jeans or to buy new sweaters and t-shirts and at least do that uh, as needed instead of trying to hunk, you know lug all this stuff around it's it's really inexpensive here and we find the same thing with toiletries it's easier for us to buy the toiletries when we get to a country than to carry them and have the extra weight these are just all things that we've learned so much about, but he's right about the, the mental. You literally, we have friends that when we first started traveling within the first couple of years, my friends would come onto Facebook and say, did you win the lottery? You know, what have you done in your whole life? How are you making enough money to be able to travel? Hello, we don't have a lot of money. I feel like I'm living a better life than I've ever lived at 69 years old. I'm enjoying life and, and experiencing things that I've never got to do on a very minimal amount of money. And we're not suffering. We go out to eat. <laughs> you know, yeah. here we go out to eat constantly because it's so much cheaper and the, the food's amazing. But, you know, we've been to Asia, we've been to Africa, we've been to South America, we've been to most of the countries in Europe. And honestly, we just don't go to the expensive places. We have not been to Australia. We don't go to Paris and we don't go, we've been, I've been to these places. But they are more expensive. They're more like the United States. But there's an entire world out here, so why go to where it's so expensive? Go enjoy these amazing places that you don't even know are there until you start traveling. That's so true. There's there's a whole world out there, as you've mentioned, that you can entirely. live so economically on. So I want to touch on that when it comes to the economics of travel, because one of the things that is expensive, not as expensive here as in the United States, and that's airline, airline traffic. You know, in the United States, we think that airline traffic and airline tickets are, are, are pricey, but when I was in Southern California, I found out that I could actually get to Barcelona for about the same price as what it would cost me to go to the east coast of, the, of my own country, which yeah. is only 3,000 miles away. So what we have done over the years, because we were, we were 
you know, in the last two years we've been to 25 different countries and mm -hmm. we were very strategic about how we do it. If you go from one extreme to the other extreme, it gets expensive and it gets time consuming and it gets complicated. So what we would do is that we would normally do little jumps, like we were in Spain and then we went over to Italy and then we went over to Croatia and then we went over through Eastern Europe and then we uh, were in Greece and then finally we took the big leap and that was from Europe all the way over to Asia. And even that was very reasonably priced because yeah. we went into Singapore. Yeah. And again, we, we would like to share this because when you go online and you go to your Google Airlines, your Google search, and under Google, it literally maps out for months ahead the different prices of tickets. And what we found is that you could have like from Singapore, from Greece to Singapore, it was 1200 1100 1200 and then there'd be a 360 in the middle of it. And we would grab the cheap ticket and then we'd just book our rest of our stuff around that ticket. So like he said, we would just go and we'd follow the, the warmth. We yeah. would just go and follow the warmth and we just go from one, and it's only a one-way ticket. So you're literally able to travel so much cheaper. And again, much cheaper in outside the United States than any place else. Yeah, when I look at where we are right now geographically on the globe, I mean, here we are in Turkey. And both of us have really gravitated towards Eastern Europe, which would be Romania and and, um, and Montenegro Hungary. and Croatia and those countries there because they're they're more real, they're more natural as opposed to Western Europe, which tends to be a little bit more artificial. So if if we look at where we are here in Turkey, we've got Romania right over the border, and then our plan is as as we get closer to summer, we are leaving here because it's going to get too expensive and too crowded and too hot so we're going to work our way up the coast towards Istanbul and then go along the top border along the Black Sea and then work our way into Georgia and again that's not that far away so we are if we look at the map right now just south of us is the places we wanted to go which would be Israel, Jordan and Egypt and if we go north we've got we've got all those options as well and if we go east we've got those options so that's what's nice about this part of the world nothing is very far away and even from here to fly to Munich, which is maybe 1,200 miles, is still very, very reasonable compared to flying 1,200 miles in the United States. I, I, I do have to second that the eastern part of Europe has been a dream. Um, you know, uh, Julie and I, we started our, our series here in Europe in the east and through the Balkan countries, and um, it's just been an eye-opener because growing up in, in the United States, it's kind of a dark zone exactly. over here. Everybody thinks of Italy. They think of uh, France. They think of the UK. They right. don't think of these countries right. over here. And this is where your right. dollar goes so far and yeah. your quality of life yeah. is and so high. And it's beautiful. Yeah. And oh, the it people yeah. are amazing. I mean, you've got Romania, Poland, um, Hungary. I mean, it's, it's just tons and tons and tons of countries. Serbia, who I never thought in a million years. Oh, Serbia. I love Serbia. Serbia yeah. sounded so scary because in the United States we heard of different We equated things. to the war. Yes, yeah. Yeah. but those are all gone now. Yeah. And so you end up in this beautiful country. And again, the cost of living in these areas compared to France and Austria and Switzerland and all the expensive countries and there's so much to see yeah. so you don't have to go to the really expensive places the same way we left the United States because it was becoming so outrageously expensive to retire in California it was nuts yeah. so you know it's and I think it, for people our age who remember that part of the world as being the dark zone it was under the auspices of the you know the great red power of USSR and so for the last 25, 30 years now, this has all been freed and all of these countries are just anxious to show off themselves to the world. And I think Croatia is probably one of the more advanced, they're more geared towards tourism and other countries are not quite as far there, but there's a lot of very small countries. There's, you know, there's Montenegro, which you guys particularly love and we've got, you know, all these small places, San Marino and Kosovo and, you know, places that you wouldn't even think to go, but yet they're absolutely gorgeous. Your, your dollar goes very, very far, and you could stay there for 90 days at a time, so you don't have to worry about any visa issues. You just you can go across the border within a couple of hours. You don't have to fly anywhere. No, I know. It's, it's, it's a really an amazing life, and I think Jillian and I, we, we pinch ourselves often to believe that we are doing the things we're doing and seeing the things we're seeing, and I think it's it, it makes us feel good to know that we're actually educating a lot of people throughout the world about these other places to go that you don't have to work till you're dropping dead to right. have a quality lifestyle um, you know it, it, 
your dollar goes so much further in some of these countries that you know maybe you can't afford to live in Florida, maybe you can't afford to live in the state of Georgia, but maybe you can in the country of Georgia, um, and have a good quality of life. So you know we, we like opening the eyes through our channel and your story of being able to share how you're able to just globe trot and live a dream life for most people that would like to do this type of traveling and you're just around 2000 a month. Yeah, yeah, and people just can't believe that. They said, you could do this. But here's the thing. You've got to be willing to change your priorities. If your priority, and there's nothing wrong, but if this is what you want in your life, okay? So that's the difference. If you really want to travel and you really want to do this, you have to let go of some of the things that you thought were a priority. But if you really want to travel and do this, oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's just amazing. And we wake up every day, not one day, I know I can say this, you know, people say, I don't go by a day without, not one day do I wake up and not say thank you, because it is so amazing. We've been doing this now for three years, almost four, because we were traveling before we actually set away from the States, but and when you're living in quarters, 24 hours a day with the same person, if you want to grow, I mean, if you really want to grow, you, you do this, because you grow. You come to know yourself. There's no running away. There's no hiding from the stuff that you don't want. It's it's an experience in and of itself. And I'm so blessed to have been doing this with him for the last um, almost four years. You know, unfortunately, they say uh, you know life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. Mm -hmm. And you know, my generation, her generation, maybe almost your generation, we were taught to work until we were 65 and then retire and then travel. But by then, traveling is a lot more difficult. And I never traveled internationally until just five or six years ago, and I really regret not doing it. So it's kind of like, for me personally, I'm making up for lost time. And so that's why we weren't necessarily looking for a second home, because the list I had, it was fairly long of different countries I wanted to visit, different places I wanted to go. And so for those of you who are watching this and, and listening to this, you know, understand that, one, you're not too old you can not afford it and it's not that difficult you know these smartphones that we kind of take for granted are the best traveling devices ever invented because they allow you to do things effortlessly that 20 30 years ago would have been very very challenging to do and so I think that anyone if they are starting to hit their 50s or maybe are beyond their 50s and they start thinking about these things Definitely. you know when we when we went through Spain and Portugal and we traveled around for six weeks I said to myself if I don't do this now I think I was 64 at the time. If I don't do this now, and 10 years from now, I look back and think, damn, I wish I had done it 10 years ago. By then, it probably would have been too late. That's because right. when you climb in and out of castles and, and do all these trail hiking and different things like that, regardless of how well you keep yourself in shape, it's still more difficult to do as you get older than when you're younger. So that's but what I admire about, about you and Julie. You guys are doing this at a young enough age that you still have a lot more energy and a lot more vim and vigor than someone who's 20 years your senior. And that's awesome. So anyone who is thinking about doing this, don't just think about it. Do your research and figure out whether you can really do it and make it happen. Yeah. You could buy a lot of things, but you can't buy more time. So I think that's if, the truth. You know, you take take advantage of the years you have and just uh, ask yourself: Do you want to retire very, very wealthy just to have a few years to to enjoy your life, or do you want to retire comfortably at a younger age and Give up some of those some dreams. Yeah. yeah, give up some of those other and things that you thought were important. And a lot of people are concerned about so what happens when you get older? What happens if you, God forbid, have medical needs and everything? And cost of medical medical help and hospitalization and doctors outside the United States is just it's frighteningly inexpensive. It's you know? almost like the deductibles that we have in the States. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. been in the hospital twice and both of them are less than my deductible. Yeah. And we both had dental work done that yes. in the States would have cost multiple times than what it actually costs so you know a lot of people are like well what happens if something happens well you know you have insurance for things like that and what's nice is a lot of the doctors a lot of the hospitals that are outside the United States are just as high quality just as well trained mm -hmm. some cases even more well trained a lot more effective and you can get things done much much more easily yeah that's that's true I, I hear a lot of people worried about taking that step because of medical insurance or or because of the cost of medical but you're right it's so cheap in so many places and I'll just go ahead and throw this out there that um, I do, I am global as a agent from the U.S. So if you're looking for traveling insurance, if you're an expat nomad, send me an email. I'll send you the link. Otherwise, the link for the I am global sites is in my 
uh, video description and if you use the link I will receive a commission so I would thank you for that and um, well, hopefully that will help you out but you know you don't always need to think about insurance in some of these cases but that's just there for a safety net and we just have it for catastrophic because we know we probably won't tap into actually using the policy because it's going to be so little to go get uh, go is. see a doctor go yeah. get some medication you want to talk about the difference in price with your Starbucks? That was probably that was probably the first aha moment we had been here for a couple of days. So this gal loves her coffee. She loves her Starbucks. No, I don't go to Starbucks anymore though. There, there, there is Starbucks here. There is Starbucks, there but is. I don't go to their Starbucks here. But I've been to Starbucks so much in the states. So my Starbucks in the states is five twenty five for a vinte um, caramel macchiato, and we came here and I went in to get a caramel macchiato and it was a dollar sixty one, a dollar sixty one. That's the difference in turkey prices, just yeah. to give you an idea. He compares by spaghetti, yeah. and I compare by my coffee. You know, the difference in cost, you know, and, and clearly, um, anywhere outside of the, the big countries that we're talking about, everything is just so much a fraction of a cost. That's so it makes the travel easy. And, and I will tell you that they haven't watched too many of our videos, but it's kind of funny that sh they bring this up because... For those of you that have known, Julie kind of does the cappuccino gauge of how much does a cappuccino same cost thing, in different same countries thing. Uh, on an average. So, so yes, it, you you all have something that you can trigger your your budget on, whether it's the price of a haircut, the price of a massage, the price of a cappuccino, a coffee. Oh, I have so. to say the massages. <laughs> whether you put it in or not, the, the massages. So I'm a massage girl, have been for years, and. When I was, the last when I was in the States, I was tickled to find a massage for $60 an hour. And then you give another $10 or so for your tip. So we have been, like we said, so many different places. And in Thailand, in Cambodia, over there, Budapest. it's insane, you know, 2 to $5 for a massage. But here even, I found massages to be so, so cheap. And, and you know, $20 for a massage or $25 for a massage. And... <laughs> that in itself, that is my luxury. That is my one luxury that I give myself yeah. is my massages. Uh, and and I, I know that you can get them even cheaper if you're not in the tourist area. But yes. um, I, you w just bring up the whole massage story. I think Julie and I, when we did the Philippines a few years back, we got massages probably on average of 1.5 times a day. Uh. And we were doing, <laughs> we were doing a, uh, it's roughly 5 or $6 per massage. But we we had our backs were all tore up from all the flying to get to the Philippines. So we spent the rest of the time getting our backs completely <laughs> unwound um, just to get on the plane and get Have them all messed up again, again going back. But we felt good for a couple of weeks. Yeah, there's, I mean, the thing that I think that we, I'm going to just to Turkey, you know, I feel like we lived right on the edge of Newport Beach, California, which is very, very expensive. And we live here in Turkey and Antalya now, and our lifestyle is better than our lifestyle was where we lived before. We couldn't afford a view like could what's not, behind us. The view, the view <laughs> we can go to any restaurant overlooking the ocean and, and never even have to worry about looking at the price in the in the menu. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Now, real quickly, we are on their rooftop terrace, by the way. So yes. this, that area that you saw that they were renting for the, the month or for several months? This is their go-to space up top. So I'm gonna go ahead and share what it looks like up here uh, with you all. As well as ta maybe take over top. There's a huge, good, big garden down below that's absolutely beautiful as well. With this closed in area that they get breakfast, huge breakfast in the morning. It's heated. This is just, you know, highly recommend this place. It's amazing. So in closing, you guys do some writing. You do um, uh, a vlog or a blog, I should say. Um, just you know, real quickly, tell the viewers what your writings and your blogs are about, and then we'll um, share the information on how to look that up. And we're working on a book right now. Um, it's called My Way or the Highway of Love. It's about relationships. It's about his life, and he actually wrote the book to begin with. It's his a book about relationships, about getting out of the one-way street, which unfortunately a lot of people do, and men may be more prone to it than women, but it's certainly not only. <coughs> but the whole book is about understanding that relationships is a two-way street which we've had to experience on our you know our highway you know, of traveling around the world it's, it's very close to being completed and he does a lot of blogs and he writes for magazines and yeah so I have a travel blog called travel younger and the reason it's called that is because I was inspired by the Millennials so the tagline of travel younger is you know teaching you how to travel like a millennial 
and I encourage people to know that it, they're not too old, it's not too expensive, it's not too difficult. Wrote a book about Mother Nature and why maybe COVID may have been her way of teaching us a lesson, getting us to slow down, and that turned into a book that we're still working on together. And I wrote a book about the Wizard of Oz and his baseball team, and I wrote a couple of other sci-fi little anthology novellas and stuff like that, and I also wrote a book about COVID called COVID Stories, which is about 19 people, including myself, who had positive outcomes from COVID because we hear all the bad that's happened, and of course it has been tragic. There has been a lot of heartache and a lot of illness and deaths that came out of it, but for some people they actually came out better because of circumstances that happened because of COVID. So I wrote a book called COVID Stories, and uh, that's out on Amazon, as all my books are. Uh, but really, it's all about teaching people how to travel. And so the first two editions of uh, Traveling the World Six Weeks at a Time, Volume 1 and Volume 2, are also available on Amazon. And it's really the story of us. It's how we started. How do you mentally prepare yourself for leaving a country that you've lived in for six decades? What's it like to go to some place where you don't speak the language? Because we don't speak any other languages besides English. And barely that sometimes. And yeah, you know, even after living in Mexico for a year and a half, we kind of gave up on trying to learn other languages. So the beauty is, is that English is as close to a universal language as anywhere, and you can almost always get by. Well, guys, I'm going to tell you I appreciate you sharing your story and explaining to people how affordable it is to live this type of lifestyle. And as a reminder for those of you that are new to the channel, um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a like. And as a reminder, Julie and I were traveling the world with our two dogs, trying to show people what it's like to live in other countries. We're sharing our cost of living with you, and we're also doing the tourist things and having adventures along the way. So we hope that you're going to join us in the future. And until next time, have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.